The flat people are cardboard stand-ups and we used our actual volunteers as models because we wanted to demonstrate that average voters have questions for the candidates. We came up with this idea to have a bird dogging opportunity for our volunteers around the state that would be uniform and that um, would keep our voter education initiatives kind of cohesive as we travel the state. The voter writes their right? question on the whiteboard and stands beside it so that it reads, we want to know, and then the voter's question. On Facebook, we've had um, thousands of people comment, like, and share the pictures, um, but our primary means of getting the information out has been Twitter, where to date we have received over two million impressions on um, our We Want to Know photos just by using the hashtag WW2K. We have at least two volunteer members in each congressional district um, working around the state, bringing our flat folks to not just political events and rallies, but also um, any sort of community events, chapter meetings, fairs, festivals, concerts, um, any place where there's going to be a, a big crowd that we can uh, get a lot of folks to ask some questions of the candidates. We took our We Want to Know campaign to college campuses. One of our main events was Hokies Want to Know. They loved the idea, they were all for it, everyone participated, they tweeted to the candidates. The real uh, benefit of this is getting more people engaged, period, in the political process. At Virginia Tech we learned that you know more people were very active in the different campaigns. To deal with the voter apathy that we have sometimes, social media may prove to be an engagement technique. It may be an equalizer on the money side of things, so the potential is great. Yeah, you live in Virginia? Yes, I do. You want to ask your candidates a question? Sure. All right, come on over. about 20 volunteers and we paired them up according to their house districts so that they can go together and um, be able to have somebody with them. And the first time that, that they go out, uh, a staff member from the state office goes with them to demonstrate and to help them out. We provided everybody with a part with their four uh, stand-up flat people in it with the whiteboards, markers, erasers, and the photo releases. Everything that they need fits in a little box so that they can easily tote it around with them. We had folks come to Richmond, everyone who's going to participate in the program for a full day training. And it was not just on the concept of we want to know and the use of the flat people and introducing the campaign, but also we taught them um, how to use Facebook, how to use Twitter, how to use the digital cameras, properly upload um, photos from their cameras and iPhones to their computers so they could then send to a dedicated email account um, for the pictures. So, and we learned even that day through that process that we had to adjust the training as it was happening because there are certain limitations that even people who are in my generation who didn't grow up with the, the Twitter and the Hootsuite and Yammer and all these other things, that um, there is an educational curve there. So we were able to scale it back a little bit, but I think still have a really effective campaign on social media. For those who don't have smartphones or tablets, we provided inexpensive digital cameras. And some of them now have gotten involved in social media. They've at least opened a Facebook and Twitter account. They at least know to go to our page on Facebook and like and share. Now we have more people who are actually tweeting and posting their own questions and posting pictures and so forth. If you want to, to get your volunteers involved in social media, you have to start small. And, and just from the very beginning, how to set up an account, what they need to do, and, and start out small with just sharing and liking. Um, and it takes some hands-on demonstration to, to show them um, how to write a post, how to upload a photo, 
it, it takes one-on-one -on -one attention. So you need enough staff people or, or volunteers who are savvy to help the others. We've utilized social media in the past to advertise events that we're having, um, as well as our voter guides encouraging people to go to them during an election. Um, and we've used social media during our lobbying seasons to encourage people to contact their members of Congress. But this is different because we're engaging them on a much different way because we're asking them to express their voice and also to go into the community and talk to their friends and neighbors and ask um, for them to have the confidence to share their opinion with AARP as well. We also do a weekly report um, each Friday where I can let the team know how well they're doing so that the folks in Big Stone Gap are just as connected to the folks in Arlington as far as how many people they've reached, how many candidates have retweeted their comments and their pictures. So they really see the effect they're having on a, on a weekly basis. I, I think this is a cool idea to let the general people express their you know, what they think about the candidates, what they think about the issues, so that not only he, but the other people will know when tier, uh, AARP tweets them and the candidate answers it, it goes all over the world. So everybody knows about the question and also knows the stand of the candidate. Without the volunteers doing the work, we want to know our people going out and doing this, these wonderful efforts to engage people in the process. The role is essential and I'm just real proud to be part of it.